I'm talking to Jennifer Hobson, who's the um, the deputy cabinet secretary. It means you're in charge of tourism, presumably. Well, I try. You try at uh, New Mexico, and she's she said happy as a clam. I just love that expression. I'm happy as a clam. Um, we're talking about um, New Mexico being a healing destination. Um, so tell me, how does that work, then, uh, Jennifer? Well, New Mexico has long been known as the land of enchantment. And uh, it's known as a healing destination because of its uh, deep history with uh, Native Americans in the area. So spas, hot springs, artists, and um, the, the light of the place and the way it feels tend to draw a certain kind of person who wants to have a hands-on and authentic enriching experience for their life, not just a holiday. So it's always drawn people like that. And now we have this new ecotourism program that really capitalizes on that product that already exists and puts it in a new context to make it more viable for travelers wanting to visit our state. Now you launched the ecotourism product last night, uh, what, a week or so ago in fact, in uh, the world travel market. Um, and you're here talking about the, uh, about the ecotourism program. Uh, but you were saying also that um, I mean, you, one of your visions um, is to have people sleeping on tents um, in Native American reservations, is that correct? That's right. One of our intentions is to have a series of safari-style tented camps throughout the state uh, where people can really experience what the land feels like. Because really what the program is, it's about what the landscape makes you feel like. How that feeling affects the way we create art, and food, and culture, and language. And, and you can't do that unless you're really out in the landscape and waking up under that starscape and really seeing what, it, what it's like um, in the rural heart of New Mexico. So the tented camps, we hope to have the first one up by the end of next summer. And um, we, we do aim to do this with uh, tribal liaisons, that is the goal and mission. And we hope that uh, the tribes will see this as a, a way to sustain their culture as well as their economy because the whole uh, issue and point really is not just promoting but also preserving uh, the natural beauty and cultural heritage of our state. Now you are also in instituting, you're putting together a uh, uh, an accreditation program for your, your operation, you're the first stages of that now. Right, well we, we've just started talking about this program and right now we're in the process of taking inventory of those existing partners in the state, um, the ones that do give back um, to um, conservancy issues and, and wildlife and, and that sort of thing. And then um, eventually what we aim to do is to have a series of suggested practices or qualifications that fit into our different partners, so hotels, spas, tour operators, will all have to meet certain criteria in order to be part of the Eco Tourism Program. And you're hitting a lot of those sustainability buttons anyway. I mean, one of the wolves program you're telling me about was fascinating. There are lots of groups in New Mexico that focus on uh, the preservation of wildlife and wild places. Um, uh, for example, New Mexico Wilderness Alliance um, has been working on the rehabilitation of a wolf pack in the southern part of the state. Now, this is an animal that's native to New Mexico. Um, it's called the red lobo. Uh, lobo means wolf in Spanish. And um, the red lobo is, has been successfully reintroduced into the southern part of the state, much to our delight. Um, and this is something that we would like to show visitors if you know, seeing wolves in their natural habitat will be part of the ecotourism program. Well, it sounds a fantastic program. We were also talking about farm to table um, uh, issues as far as, uh, as far as the tourists are concerned. So give me some examples of that. Well, Santa Fe, for example, aside from being a world-class art destination, has been rated as having one of the country's top ten farmers markets. Um, and this farmer's market um, has a great farm-to-table initiative. So all of the locally grown um, produce, including uh, meat, chicken, chicken, um, pork, lamb, and uh, beef products, all go directly into our local restaurant. So there's a real, there's a real desire for biodynamic, dynamic, organic, and putting that on the plates for our visitors and for our, our locals. So your tourists can ski in. Taos. That's they right. can uh, they can have a a, a, um, a vision quest in the in the mountains. Uh, they can eat good food and they can see some wonderful countryside. Now, also, you're talking about the um, 
going to see the cultural things in, uh, in reservations. Tell me a bit more about that. Uh, one of the main examples I like to use is um, the artist Barbara Gonzalez, who's a member of the San Ildefonso Pueblo. And her great-great-grandmother um, developed some of the famous black-on-black -black pottery, which is something you can see today in the Smithsonian. And Barbara has a studio anyone can visit. So the ecotourism program really sort of will serve as a liaison between someone like Barbara, who may not um, be advertising, uh, and, and, and the consumer who really wants to meet a local artist, to say, this is where the clay my family has gathered for generations. This is how I make my art, and this is why I do it. And that can be a very enriching experience. So that's an example of the cultural heritage tourism that we're so tell me, how would you characterize an ecotourism holiday to New Mexico? I think it's something, uh, it, it, it's a hands-on authentic experience um, that is going to change somebody's life. They come and they, they're going to come away with a story to tell. And I think that is the most valuable thing uh, travelers are looking for today.